Hello, friend. Today I'd like to welcome you to a new experiment in terror, where we ask the question, hey, Tegan, what's in the bag? It has occurred to me that I don't necessarily have uh, the best venue to talk about new comics on a weekly basis. I talk about them a little bit on social media. Uh, occasionally, I put one on my TikTok, my Instagram channel, uh, but I try to avoid them. Nothing new on um, what's in Tegan's storage locker. But then I realized, well, you know, maybe it might be interesting to change things up a bit so that I can actually talk about new and interesting books that I'm reading. I think there's, a, I think there's more of a demand for that, actually, than for the older comics material, which isn't necessarily something that I think was completely clear to me like a year and a half ago. Uh, but it definitely seems like there are different ecosystems for the comics internet. And that doesn't make sense to me because I like all comics. I like new comics. I like old comics. I like learning new things about comic books every day. I like to think that there is nothing in comic books that is completely alien to me, or at least I hope not, because uh, I really just enjoy comic books. I'm still enjoying uh, Hammond's return uh, to G.I. Joe. And I, I'll point out here my... My store is so nice enough to give us the bags and the boards. Sometimes I get, sometimes they give me the resealable ones. I'm not a fan of those. I use them if they come my way, but uh, and then I say that and I never actually tape them up so they all get dog-eared. But yeah, I'm still really enjoying this, enjoying it, frankly, a lot more than I would have uh, possibly guessed. Uh, I missed out. I've read. The Marvel run. I've, I've read through the whole thing and I read bits and pieces here and there when it was at the other publishers. So if ever I decide to go back and do a, re a read through, there's a good half of the series that's completely more or less unknown to me. And the fact that it was basically being made for fans of the comic without any real connection, I think, to the toy line as it exists now meant that he wasn't under the same pressure to introduce something new. So the weird thing is, uh, the later G.I. Joe, it, it's missing a slight uh, bit of electricity that came from Larry Hammock basically having to play dodgeball with some, frankly, onerous <laughs> setup sometimes. Hasbro just threw him any old thing and he had to make it work. Even the cop in the Hawaiian shirt, even the spaceship. And that gives that series a charm that the, the later material, when he's just got his characters that he wants to deal with, uh, you know, you lose something from seeing the tap dance. And I, I know that, that would, hearing that would probably give him, give any writer of license material a headache, but, but it's true. It's the same with Marvel's Transformers series. It was, it was fun to see them, uh, in hindsight deal with the balls that are that are thrown at them. And this issue has art. I don't know, it probably says in the back, I don't know if Paul Pelletier is going to be the new artist or an artist for a stretch, but I just looked at an issue of Green Lantern on the last episode of the, the Storage Locker that I recorded. Always really liked his work. Uh, happy to see it here. Inks by Tony Kodos, uh, colors Francesco Sagala, and it's got a, a flatter and a colors. One of these days, someone just needs to sit me down and walk me through every step because as many times as it's been explained to me, I do not know. I do not think that I could, I could tell you what a flatter does. And I've, it's been explained to me so many times. <laughs> and uh, the, these covers are still by um, Andy Kubert. Nice work from Andy Kubert. Nice pieces. So, yeah, we were dealing with, I'm, I'm going to go back and reread them all in a chunk at some point here to get the details. But essentially, it's, it's really cuckoo. Uh, half of Cobra has been turned into zombies. Uh, just zombies everywhere. Destro is just not a part of that. It's, I think what's happening is that someone's coming after the, the Dreadnoughts for some reason or another. So that's why he's with Destro, because uh, Destro's the one guy who he can trust. And Destro's like, why, why are you here? <laughs> I don't actually want you in my house. <laughs> uh, 
in here, Snake Eyes. He looks like he's just uh, practicing in some sort of, uh, you know, G.I. Joe danger room. There's Scarlet. Everyone loves Scarlet. Everyone loves Snake Eyes. Everyone loves these characters. You know, I haven't, have not picked up any, any of those other, the new G.I. Joe books. Even the ones that had, I mean, they, they all have decent creators on them. Uh, but man, I don't really care about these characters as such. I care about these characters the way Larry Hammer writes them. Because, uh, you know, it's, at this point, the sliding time scale has really hit G.I. Joe hard. You know, this is a team that was, the core of it was composed of Vietnam veterans. That's, you know, Stalker, Snake Eyes, uh, that, that whole core who came out of that war. You know, they're, they're in their 70s now. They look pretty spry. <laughs> Zorana. Oh, man, I, I have never bought a G.I. Joe in my life. I almost bought a Zorana at Walmart the other day. And it was more money than I wanted to spend at Walmart that day, but uh, I like Zorana. She she was actually I, I, one of the one of the better characters in that first Hammer run. She really uh, jumped off the page and uh, made herself indelible. And you know, she's nothing on the uh, on the show or the the toy. That's that's Larry Hammer for you. Not recognizing any of these names. Yeah, okay, so this is the new Destro book with this Energon universe, which, oh man. I need to go back, what I need to do is I need to go back and finally catch up with the um, the last run of Transformers that everyone liked so much. I just, everything I've seen from this, this Energon, well, everything I've seen from this Energon universe makes it seem like, oh, they're going in the opposite direction. And I'm not, you know, and this, actually, I was thinking I might pick up this book simply because this is a really, really indelible ad. And oh, I'm enjoying Birds of Prey so much. And this Marco Ferrari fellow, this is just a fantastic ad. I might pick that one up, I admit. Uh, that is a really, really nice piece of art there. Uh, just, I don't like giving a lot of money to <laughs> Uh, when there was like half a day when people thought that there was a chance that G.I. Joe might go back to Marvel, I have to admit I was, but it, it, that was impossible the way it was timed out. It was, they, they made the announcement of the, uh, the Skybound right, right after that. All right, what do we got here? Look at something fun here. Okay. Now this one, I'm actually thinking I, I might. Uh, read this on the, the TikTok channel when it's done because it is so strange, so strange to see Jeffrey Brown. And he's been on this family car cartooning stuff path for over a decade, I think. He was a pioneer in indie guys just moving into all ages material, straight up. Uh, he started doing Star Wars books, and I think those books started to really sell because uh, they made a lot of them. And he's, he's done his own Batman in this style as well. And it's Jeffrey Brown who did all those. Man, those are books I do not necessarily want to revisit, if you know what I mean. They seem like maybe they're just of a place and a time. But he knows how to draw really a really attractive comic by now. It's not at all what you you know get from most of the rest of the DC line, but they're publishing. These are this is a republish of a um, a YA format graphic novel, and it's, it says fan favorite story in an all new format and straight up. I have no idea if anyone else is buying the books in this format, but I I appreciate it. I like periodicals. I like buying comic books. Uh, I bought this one as well. This is that they're I guess they're rewarding popular books, or you know there's a pilot program. But I'm definitely open to this material, in this format because I never really you know I like the look of a lot of the OGNs that DC's doing lately. I look through them at the store, but I don't. I never know if I ever, if I have another fifteen bucks to put in the cart that day. Um, 
this is this is you know so if they're narrow casting to old people who are still you know attached to the pamphlet format they're doing a good job because they're putting out good really good work in you know as YA books with a spine which is what people well like me and everyone else was screaming at them that they should be doing 15 years ago and they finally caught up with it and the mark you know they caught up with the market in a big way because you know, one of the DC's big free free comic book day offerings was uh, a big Barda YA book. It looks great. It looks like it'll do gangbusters. That's it. That's a great character to put in front of, uh, you know, ostensibly younger readers. Perfect hook. And it seems like a format that might expose that character and that whole family of titles historically to a brand new audience. That's great. That's fantastic. Young Alfred. Wait a minute. We already got Young Alfred. Young Alfred was that Pennyworth show on streaming that inexplicably became a prequel for V for Vendetta, but like straight up. I don't watch a lot of these shows, and randomly, my family decided to watch the, watch Pennyworth, and we actually got sucked into it. We liked that one. It was just so far out. Uh, took a lot of liberties, and it had been fun, it had fun with the little corner of the mythos because of that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh, you see this? I don't know if you can see this. It's a. Um, Looks like a low res scan of this page. Now, this page is fine. There's no reason why that had to happen. Uh, mm, mm. But you know, it's just hanging around the the bat uh, mansion with you know Robin as a friend who has absolutely no no idea th that he's Robin, so he gets to have. Normal interaction. That's actually a really good hook for a Robin story. A really good hook. Robin has a friend who has nothing to do with superheroes. <laughs> this is great. See, now the thing is, if you put this on a page of, like, Cooper Skeever, the Marvel Benefit issue, it would fit right in. And this isn't even... The Bizarro Comics, this is just straight up getting sold, you know, in the Scholastic Book Fairs. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. It just, it, this is, I'm sure I'll enjoy it when I sit down and actually read it cover to cover, but just flipping through it, it's just a really fun-looking book. Well, this looks fun. Introducing Ernest Fan, the world's biggest Batman fan. That sort of seems like a comedic take on the really weird... Uh, the real worlds, they only did like three or four from the real world line, which was just sort of kind of depressing short stories. Oh, that's cute. Batman sitting on the vending machine. About people in the real world affected by the superheroes. Uh, character pieces. And the Batman one, I think, was kind of depressing, if I recall correctly. I don't know if they've ever even put those in a, in a book. Uh, Bruce Wayne. Not super. Eh, okay, I see who I see who the audience is, but that's not necessarily. Although seeing Bane, uh, not um, shaking down the kid for his lunch money. Now you know, whenever Batman has stubble, like serious things are afoot, and they're still making all these Teen Titans Go books. God bless them; they were so popular that these little guys or why those characters are going to be popular for decades. I hate to say it to someone who does not like the Titans. Even I like those guys. And another of their previews was for that book. This looks cute. I, I don't know if it's cute enough to pay full price for. <laughs> Maybe I'll flip through it in the store. The Joker's dog. All right, why don't we look through a couple? Let's do a lightning round here. Here's a book that I'm really enjoying. I haven't heard anyone say anything about it, but it's penciled by this guy named Bengal, who did some Catwoman that I really liked a couple years ago. He's, he's got this super clean style, uh, you know, very European, but uh, look, look at this. This is gorgeous stuff. And written by Rick Remender, so 
I would just flip through it so far. I'm waiting to sit down with the whole thing when it's done. But look at this. Look at this. This Bengal fella. Whose color is this? This is, uh... oh, Bengal's coloring it, I guess. With Russ Roten doing letters. Look at this. You know, this looks nice, and I, might, I don't know if I'll end up writing a review of this uh, for another outlet, but it looks, it's a really nice looking book. Ooh, that, that's, a, that's a final page for you. And I got some letters. Excellent. All right. What else? Oh, this thing. Are you buying the Batman Dylan dog? I wasn't buying it at first, but so, someone online, uh, maybe it was... Uh, no, I don't remember, but someone pointed out, like, yeah, there's a $5 comic book that is inexplicably, like, 80 pages long. And then I, next time I was in the store, I picked it up and I looked through it. And it's, you know, this Batman crossover with this Dylan Dog guy, who no one in America knows who he is at all. Don't, don't even bother worrying about it. But this is by Italian talent, Roberto Riccioni, Gigi Cavigno, Cavanago, rather, and a Order della Edera, uh, lettered by... Pat so who's the translator? Oh, oh, maybe they did it in English. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, three issues of, the, of Batman crossing over with this character who, I'm not going to say that no one knows who he is in America because they put Dylan Dog material in print in America and it's just, it's not something that a lot of people, they've never tried to make a go of the character in, a, in an American version. But I suppose that's something that they could do at any point. You know, America does that. Oh, this is gorgeous, though. For five bucks. This, friends, I have no idea. Oh, and Ramona Fraden. That, that's a classic. They've been really good with these these uh, tribute spreads lately. This is, a, this is a classy piece right here. I thought the one they did for Neil Adams was really exceptional. Uh... Oh, okay, they're getting ads back in the comics. I'm not going to... Oh, man, look at this. This is great stuff. You know, I have no idea what's going on here. I'll go back. I'll read it at some point. I don't know if I'm going to do it on the TikTok because 80 pages means like a three-minute a three video. <laughs> I learned my lesson on bloodlines. Oh, my God, we're done with bloodlines. Let's celebrate being done with bloodlines. And... I'm still double dipping on this uh, this run of Amazing Spider-Man, the uh, alien costume facsimiles, which I'm going to be honest with you, I I already have this run of comics from Marvel Tales. I didn't have the original versions though, so having having them with the, uh, the ads uh, and plus any example to look at classic run, friends. I've said in the past. You know, his Amazing Spider-Man actually isn't his best, simply because he improves so much over uh, the, the, these these couple years on his way to Thor. And it's Thor where he really starts to mature. But that doesn't mean there's a bad look in comics by any, event, by any reason. He's good with Joe Rubenstein. Oh, that's a nice-looking page. That is a nice-looking page. He's good with Joe Rubenstein. Drew, Rubenstein doesn't work with everybody. He works well with Friends. Friends is a guy who really uh, rewards creators who can put some texture on the page. That's why his work looks so good with Bill Sinkovich. And what else? Okay, I admit I picked up this one too. I've been buying this simply because, and don't laugh at me, because it's got the, uh, the, the introduction of the alternate universe uh, female Wolverine, not Wolverine's clone or kid, the female, you know, the distaff version. Uh, 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 I, oh, God, this thing. Marvel Unlimited, man. They're getting good people. Jermon Peralta, Kev Walker, Juan Jose Reap, Juan Ferrer Ferreira, David Baldeon. They're getting so many good people to do this. And it just, man, I just, Ever since they made him look like that. Hey, if you bring back Dracula looking like Dracula should look like. Who did this? 
Christos Cage, Ildre Sinar. Ildre Sinar. I actually, I think I bought something of his. Did he do the Grey Hulk book? I like the Grey Hulk book. The Grey Hulk book was, I think, a pretty fun ride. And this is, you know, this is just a bunch of Wolverines trying to kill each other. It's great. <laughs> oh, Deadpool. Well, there you go. That'll sell some copies. So I haven't read it. They're going through space and time looking for Onslaught or something. It's fun. I'm sure they'll end up doing something with the, that character. And maybe the, this series will be worth a lot of money someday. That's not why I bought it. But hey, I'm not about... I've, I have flipped books. I bought the first arc of Ultimate Spider-Man. And I bailed because I saw it, it It wasn't what I was interested in at all. I knew it was going to... Already, it was doing really well by then. Book didn't need me. Um, so, yeah, I made quite a bit of profit off of that uh, particular bit of commerce. All right. Just quick look at the bag, see, you know, a few things that I'm probably not going to get around to talking about anywhere else. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to uh, do this weekly, bi-weekly, if people like it. I don't know. I'm going to still keep doing the other videos. So uh, check out my other channel, What's in Tegan's Storage Locker, TikTok and Instagram, new comic books. I've got a podcast with Claire Napier, Napier about Top Cow Comics. Uh, I got work on the Comics Journal website. Maybe every other week lately. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself.